uh, how how were you uh, like what kind of got you into uh, oh I guess I already asked you asked what what got you into acting but kind of what got you into like stunt stuff like 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 uh, why would you not be interested in like being an actor or whatnot or Okay, when it, when it first started, uh, there was a television series on TV with an actor named Dick Jones who played, uh, did the voice of Pinocchio, and he was a child star. And at this point, uh, he was in a television series called The Range Rider, which was him and Jock Mahoney. And it was a western. And I looked like Dickie, and I wanted to double him. So I started writing letters to Flying A Studios, which was owned by Gene Autry, Gene Autry Productions. And uh, of course, I never got any answers back because I was just a kid. I think I was 13 or 14 at the time I started writing these letters. And I, but I never lost the desire to do that. And, and uh, later on, I started skating in, in amateur roller derby and uh, doing that kind of stuff. And, and then I started working at a place called Corganville out in Cali California. Uh, that was a movie ranch owned by Ray Crash Corrigan. And we used to do live shows in front of uh, 3,000 people on the weekends, you know, doing these Western things to go and find a GOK Corral and uh, all like that. And through that, I met the guy that uh, wrote, produced, and directed Battle of the Gunfighter with Marty Robbins. So I got to, I got to be in that and play a part. And then through that, I met Walt Disney later on, and then I became Kurt Russell's stunt double. Oh, and yeah. like I say, uh, the dialogue didn't come easy because it was at Corrigan that I developed this stage fright. So I never really wanted to. I mean, sure, you'd like to act, but yeah. uh, the fear of it. So right. I just never did. And uh, just went on into doing stunts. And when I got into Kurt Russell's contract, I stayed with him for 25 years. <laughs> And, and that's the next question I'm going to ask you as we kind of segue into one question to another. Uh, you were, uh, of course, a uh, career up to double for over 25 years. And how does it feel to be a part of so many great films that you've done and that you were able to help them out with? Well, you have to know Kurt to know what a, what a treat and a pleasure it was to be around him and, and work with him. Uh, he's just, he's one of the nicest gentlemen that I've known, in, you know, in the business. Uh, his dad is, is actually the one that got me into his contract because he told Curry, he said, you know, when we were still at Disney doing the Dexter Riley things, he said, you know, we can't at home tell when it's you and when it's Dick. He said, you ought to get, put him in the contract. And Curry was a young kid at that point. I think he might have been 20. He was 18 when I first, well, he was 17. He celebrated his, his 18th birthday on, on our first movie together, which was computer wore tennis shoes. And his dad uh, said, well, you got to get him in the contract. Kurt said, I don't know how to do that. So he, he got it done. He talked to the agent, had me click it here. So whenever they hired him, they called me. And, um, I mean, he did some real good films, I think. Uh, I only missed a couple. I missed one that I really wanted to work on, and that was Elvis, because I'm a big Elvis fan. You know, and I thought he did a marvelous job in Elvis. And then there was another one with... Henry Fonda, that uh, they shot in Georgia and all the, he, he did something like roll well, under a train or something from one side of the tracks to the other. Yeah. Other than that, I did everything he did. Okay. From uh, Escape to New York, to, uh, I suppose you were in Overboard as well? No, oh, that was another one that I gave away. I was working, I think, I was working on the thing at the time with, okay. with Carpenter. Uh, when they did that and uh, of course they called me about doing it and when I couldn't then I, I stuck another guy in there who used to be Michael Landon's double okay. uh, named Hal Burton okay. and he was a pretty good double for Kurt too but he didn't really do anything for Kurt he was just there uh, Kurt did everything himself okay well, well that's excellent and uh, uh, we also uh, talked about uh, Kurt Russell's first uh, film uh, Elvis and uh uh, he said you, you you would love to be in that part or be in that film. Uh, why were you unable to uh, be in that film? Well, when, I, when he called me about it, and it was after the fact, you know, after he'd already shot the film, and I said, boy, I'd love to have done that. And he said, well, I'll tell you why you didn't. He said, there wasn't a thing in it. And, and But I said, well, I saw Aaron Norris's name in there as your stunt double. And he said, yeah, they wrote that name when we were in Memphis. 
He said all he did was drive the car down the road, and they listed him as a store coordinator or something. And um, so anyway, Aaron Norris happens to be Chuck Norris's brother. Okay. You know, Chuck Norris I went to school with. I guess I went to school with both of them, uh, high school. Anyway, uh, so I didn't get to do it. Okay. And uh, was he a good person to work with? Who is this? Kurt Russell. Oh, yeah. Yeah, great guy. He would, he would always ask me, well, can I do this or do you want to do it? And he, i got to tell you about Kurt. There isn't anything that he couldn't do and do it better than me. <laughs> very physical guy, very handy. Uh, but, of course, you know the insurance problem. A producer can't afford to get his actor hurt. He can afford to get stunt people hurt because they just put the clothes on somebody else and do it again. You know what I'm saying? But uh, they can't afford to get their star hurt. There's a lot of actors out there that are very capable of doing it, most of the stuff we do. But it's it's an insurance thing. Yeah. And uh, let's see. Uh uh, with uh, with that, uh, now we go from that to uh, uh, your uh, role in Halloween 2. And I'm sure you got stories upon stories upon stories of uh, that film. And uh, first of all, first question I'm going to ask about that, how were you able to be in that role, first of all? Okay, that, that's a pretty common knowledge, but uh, I, had, I had worked on the, let's see, Escape from New York yeah. with Deborah Hill and John Carpenter. And when we finished that, Deborah gave me a call and said, listen, can you come in and, and have a meeting uh, with me? She said, we're doing a, a new little picture. Uh, she didn't tell me what it was or, or anything. Uh, and she said, uh, I'd like you to be the stunt coordinator. So I said, sure. So I went into the office. I met with her. And she said, now you have to go back and meet with the director, Rick Rosenthal. I said, fine, where is he? And she said, he's down at the end of the hall. So I head off down the hall, down the end of the hall. And on the way... There was an office that didn't have anything in it but a desk and a chair. Well, laying on the desk was the mask. <laughs> so I put the mask on because by this time she had briefed me on what the movie was. Yeah. And, but I had never seen the first one. So anyway, I put the mask on and I go to his door and I just stand there and look at him. <laughs> and he says, who are you? I didn't answer. I just said that I stood there. He says, who the hell are you? <laughs> Pulled the thing off, I said, well, I'm Dick Warlock, and I'm here about the coordinator job, blah, blah, blah. We had our little meeting, and as I was leaving, carrying the mask with me, I turned around and said to him, I said, is there any reason I can't play this guy? And he looked me up and down. Of course, I'm I'm shorter than, than uh, Nick Castle. Yeah. Of course, I'm shorter than anybody who's played him since then. <laughs> but anyway, uh, he looked me up and down, and he said, no, I don't care if Deborah doesn't care. So I went back and asked her, and she said, no, it's okay with me. So that's how I got the... I play the part of Michael. Okay, and uh, see, Nick Castle yeah. is a writer director. Uh, I don't think he had directed at that point, but that was his aspirations. He and John Carpenter went to film school together, yeah. so that's how Nick got credit. He was one of five different people who played Michael in the first one. Okay, because the first one was a non-union movie. Yeah, so uh, anybody could have played it. You know, I mean, you could have got twenty people to do it, and they, it, it, it was just one of those things. You know. They'd say, okay, you put the, put the clothes on, we're going to do this scene. And that's uh, that's how they made that first one. But the second one was a union film, so they used me all the way through. Okay, and uh, any, because uh, uh, I'll be honest, I have not seen that movie. Well, I actually have never seen it in full. I've just uh, seen bits and pieces of that. Mm -hmm. uh, any well-known people that may have been in that film that people might have recognized from that film other than yourself? Oh, Donald Pleasance was... Uh, was highly recognizable, you know, and, and a great guy, you know. Uh, Pam Shoup, she played Nurse Karen. She was she was a recognizable uh, actress. I'm not sure. Lance Guest, who went on to, you know, be a, pretty much of a household name, he yeah. was in that. I think that might have been one of his first projects. Uh, who else? Uh, I think Charlie Cyphers, who played the sheriff. He was... Uh, he was well, pretty well known, you know. And he had worked for John Carpenter in several films. I think he worked in in The Fog, and uh, uh, he might have even been in uh, Precinct Assault on Precinct Thirteen, the original. Okay, and uh, I believe your son Lance was in that too, right? Well, both my boys were in that. Okay, uh, Billy, who who's, who went on to you know have an acting career, uh, he's been acting since he was eighteen or so. But uh, yeah, he was in he was in that with me. He uh, played a little. There were 